What's up everybody? Welcome back to Rotor Riot. This is going to be quad mods where we take this Ishin Wizard and we get it a little bit closer to something that we might actually build for ourselves. When I first heard we were doing this series, my thought was, why are we promoting the Ishin Wizard? That's not really something that we would want people to get into. But that's not really the point. The point is we know you guys are going to go get something like this because it's the most affordable way to get everything going. So instead of fighting it, let's help you guys figure out what things you can do to to improve upon it and make it something that will work for you and be more reliable. So in the first episode, Tommy took this guy and he did a couple mods to it. Number one, he replaced the camera for a much higher quality one. He also changed the protocol of the receiver from PPM to IBUS, and which is gonna give you a much faster um, response out of your controls. And then he did some Betaflight tweaking and tuning, which makes a big difference in how these things fly. He also added his very own Umma, Umma grip, Umma grip, however you, how, however you want to say it. And then he took the antennas and he stuck them out on the arms as opposed to up through these holes or however they had it. Now that we've talked about what Tommy did, we've given you a little overview of what we got going here. Let's go take it outside. Let's see how it flies after Tommy's mom. Okay, so right off the bat, 3S is not quite the same power I'm used to. Actually, you know what? This battery's kind of almost dead already, but whatever, we'll rock with it. It's just to get the feel of how it flies, which minus the power, it seems like it flies just fine. I think he, uh, I think Tommy did some tuning to it and some beta flight, you know, magic. Not bad. Let's take it to the bench, shall we? All right, all right. I would say for a, a 3S wizard, not too bad. Tommy got this thing to actually fly pretty good. Between using the iBus, I think that helps, and the tweaks that he did in Betaflight. I think my mods are just going to be more preference stuff and just the small things. I don't think it's going to end up flying a whole lot better. Maybe if the next guy uses 4S, that'll help, but I'll show you the things that I would do if this was mine. Although they didn't blow up in on me, props that come with it are known to just kind of pew! I know it's tempting to use them because they give you like 10 sets with this thing, but use these at your own risk. I think one of my mods is going to be get rid of these things. These don't do anything for you. They might keep a little dirt out of there, but then you also can't like inspect anything in there. You can't access anything and it makes it more of a pain in the butt to take apart and put back together. That's mod number one. Get rid of these. They're not doing anything for you. These ones, you're going to need those. That holds the camera in place. So here's what we're going to do. I got a better use for this. We're going to cut little pieces of it and then we can use that to protect your ESCs from the prop coming around and whacking it. So I've killed a bunch of ESCs that way. You hit something, your prop kind of bends down, it comes around and just knocks components right off your speed controller. So just cut a little chunk of that. You can put that right over there. We'll put a little tape around it. Hopefully I can find electrical tape. And this will kind of do two things in one. So another thing about this guy, it comes with these foam landing feet, but these have a tendency to just kind of rip off because they're only, you know, they're just stuck on there with adhesive. Even though they don't line up perfectly, another little side benefit we'll get is if you put a little tape around those, it really helps them from getting ripped up and torn right off of the quad. This is like a two for one mod we got going here. At least if you get in a crash and the prop hits that, it's not going to take the ESC out. I did plan to kind of move these, but I, I, don't, I don't think that's actually too bad. It's away from the carbon. It's pretty good. It just has a uh, really lightweight zip tie on it, so I want to put something a little more robust so that doesn't come loose and be flopping around because if your prop comes around and chops that off, you're going to really see a reduction in range. But let's make sure that's nice and secure with a stronger zip tie. So that's the next thing we can do is make sure all these nuts and bolts are snug. So it's not necessarily a mod, but just general good practice. These things have a lot of vibration and it's just really easy for a screw to loosen up a little bit. And it's it's not a major deal as long as the screw doesn't come all the way out and you don't have a part go flying off. But for the most optimal flight performance, you want it to feel nice and rigid and the arms don't wiggle or anything like that. It's, it's too little to actually see on camera, but it's trust me, it's wiggling. So yeah, like I said, general practice is just good every few days to check your nuts and bolts, kids. That's about it for, you know, freebie mods that you can do with stuff you got laying around. The next thing I would like to switch out on this, even though it, 
it works fine is the video transmitter. So I wasn't getting like bad video or anything, but just typically older, cheaper VTXs are not as good for if you want to fly with other people. And we'll replace it with a handy dandy uh, Immersion RC Tramp. Downside is this is like a trickier setup for video transmitters than like a current flight controller. Because normally I could just like solder it right to the flight controller, but I got to follow this wire, see where it goes, see where we're getting power from, see where the, the uh, white wire, which is your signals, I have to figure out how that's attaching to the camera. Is it going directly there or is there something in between? So we're gonna start taking some things apart here. We'll find out what the situation is. I, think I can unplug this for now. This is for the receiver. All right, follow the wire. There's the white wire. And then here's where it's pulling power from. So anything on this side, of this section of the power distribution board is going to be putting out 12 volts. The reason why you know that is because right there where you see that 12, those two jumper pads have been jumped together. If I were to desolder that and then do it, um, jump the bridge on this side, then it would put out what says VCC. What that means is the same voltage of your actual battery. So if you were using a four cell battery that's roughly 16 volts so as of right now if i plugged a four cell battery even though i'm starting off with 16 volts it's going to step that down to 12. it looks like this side is five volts so this one can either do 12 5 or vcc and right now it's putting out five volts these are not regulated this is where the video transmitter is wired to this just puts out whatever the battery is which is fine because this tramp that we're going to use can handle, I think, up to 24 volts, which is more than we're ever going to put through this thing. So we should be plenty fine to wire this directly. And then another benefit of this and other modern, more current video transmitters is they have better filtering. So even if you just give it raw power off of your battery, you're going to get a, a cleaner video feed than some, you know, less expensive one. Let's get the old wire off. That guy off. I have two different things on one pad here. This might be a little tricky. That wire that I just took off, and this is also confirming that these two pads are full voltage, that's what the camera is using to know the voltage of your battery. So this little periwinkle colored wire, that senses the voltage and then it displays it on your camera so you know the status of your battery. We're going to have to make sure we put that guy back on somewhere, but it doesn't necessarily have to go on the same pad. It can pretty much go, I think, to any positive pad. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to move it to the next one over just so it's I don't have a uh, difficulty with this wire I'm about to add there we go now I'm gonna figure out what wires we're gonna need on this guy it may not be the most intuitive thing but it does tell you what every wire is and they're also you know color-coded so on the from the bottom up we got positive ground so this is gonna be your input voltage the next one up you have a 5 volt that would be if you want to power your camera off of this. We've already got that taken care of, so that third wire up, we won't be using that. Next, V is for video. T is for telemetry. We're gonna try to set up telemetry. What that means, basically, is that you'll be able to switch the channel on this through your goggles and your um, transmitter. And then last is audio. We're definitely not using that. I'm not a fan of audio. I don't, I don't need to hear it. Any wires you're not going to use, you can leave them. You can cut them. Or like the cleanest way to do it is to lift up these little tabs here and pull them out. Oops, don't need that wire. I'm also not going to use this 5 volt. That's the third one in. I think I'll just leave this length. I'm going to take my power. I'll twist it up. There we go, we got power. Here's the video signal. So, I think that's it for the under the hood stuff. Because this is most likely, I can just put it on top. Now we gotta try to tuck this all in and make it not look so messy. Let's try UR3. I don't know if it goes to TX or RX, we'll figure it out. Tin both of these, just in case, because I'm not 100% not sure which one it's gonna be yet, but we can figure it out by process of elimination. If we can't get it working on one, we'll move it over to the other, and we'll figure it out. So um, TX and then RX, so it's transmit and receive. And I'm just not 100% sure, because a lot of times when you see TX and RX, you'll kind of have something similar on the other end as well. So typically you're gonna hook up, yeah, TX to RX, RX to TX, but this just has telemetry. So I'm not 100% sure if it should go to the transmit or the receive, but we'll figure it out. So let's just try it here first. 
So we got this guy put on. I do not have access to Betaflight at the moment. For right now, we just want to make sure we got video. And I think we're also going to do a upgrade to four cell and see how that flies. So let me get this thing put back together. I need some kind of adhesive. Whatever happened to using gum? Like all in the old school movies, you'd always see them using gum to stick things together. I've never seen a person do that in real life. Let's bring that back, huh? And a boom. We got some uh, Gem Fan Hulky 5055s. Let's try these out. Oh, yeah. I believe we're ready to go give it another test flight. Let's do it, huh? Let's give this another shot and see how she does. Take off. Oh, and it's much worse. <laughs> now it doesn't even fly at all. I feel like this is like taking a crap on us. Hmm. This ain't good. Yeah, that that ESC is going dead. Smell that? Should we make it? Should we make it catch on fire? Yeah. You see how it's melting? It's a, not the best resolution to this episode. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to give up that easy because Papa Capper found us some ESCs we can swap out. One of the reasons why we don't recommend this is because they're just known for these ESCs to just quit their desire to live for no reason. We burned up an ESC, so instead of just uh, forcing Drew to do that mod, we're gonna do that. Another thing uh, Chad pointed out is I made a rookie mistake. A lot of these bind and fly direct from China quads come with RP SMA video transmitters, meaning that the pin is on the transmitter and not on the antenna. Double hole, but no pin. That's just not how it works. You gotta have one pin and one hole. Insert your own joke there. Get rid of that guy, replace it with that guy. We're going to pull these ESCs off. We're going to replace them with these guys. I'm not sure much about these, but it can't be worse than what's on it. So, so I like to do all the work just right here on the arm. So instead of, re instead of using these wires that are on this ESC, I'm just going to strip that down bare, strip that down bare. That way all I have to do is just work right here at the arm. I don't have to follow it into the PDB and all that stuff. found that a lot of times if you wire them straight across without crossing the wires it'll go counterclockwise not always it depends on i think the factor on that is how the motor is wound i'm not sure different motor esc combinations will go a different way if you don't cross any wires if i'm wrong i can just flip them all around so before we uh plug this in to test it out let's make sure we have the appropriate antenna on there this, this guy is rpsma which is what the stock video transmitter is the one we put on there, the Immersion RC Tramp, is SMA, so we need an SMA antenna. So make sure you put that on there before you plug it in. No fire, that's great. I'm happy with that. Except one of them doesn't spin, so that's not good. Why is this one not working? I don't know. Nope. Okay, so it could be there's something wrong with that motor. It could be the speed controller is bad. It could be the flight controller is just not putting any signal out on that output. The best way to figure things out like that is to just start moving stuff around. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put that motor over here. I'm gonna put this motor over there. So if now this motor doesn't work anymore, that means that that motor is bad because the problem followed it over there. If still this arm of the quad doesn't spin then we can at least rule out that it's the motor it still doesn't spin or maybe this esc is no good right out of the box next step swap it out with one of the original ones and uh at least isolate that that's the problem that that alone will make me feel better we'll have drew put on some nice high quality escs but for now i'm just trying to get this thing to fly so you actually can mix match escs it won't be the end of the world uh there's a chance that it could fly a little wonky like maybe they're not exactly the same protocol or not exactly calibrated the same way but for at least testing purposes it should be fine and in a pinch i've done it before i've put different escs together ideally you want them to be the same but it's it's not a big deal to mix them and then it spins again so Thanks, Chad. You gave me a bum ESC. I think 
we can get a little more out of this. So our, our CPU loads only at 8% and we can also take off the accelerometer because we're not going to use that. I'm sure we can get at least up to a 4 kilohertz update in gyro and PID loop. So yeah, 19%. That, so that should make a difference. It should fly better. So you can safely go to maybe like 30 or 40 and we were only using 8%. Let's give it a shot. See how she flies. Woo! So far so good. They're all spinning. That one's acting a little funny. That's the one that's a different ESC. Please don't wait out. All right. Oh boy. Yep, video seems a lot better now that we have the proper antenna on it. Hasn't uh, burned up yet. I'm happy with that. It's legit. This is like feels not too far off from what I'm used to flying. So a couple little modifications. It's They don't come too far off from uh, being good to fly. It's just a couple of the things you're going to want to switch right off the bat. And one of them is the speed controllers. <laughs> okay that went a lot better this time i'm pleased with the performance now let's just recap what we did okay so first and foremost we did the little esc protectors by cutting up these old crappy props that's going to help you work for when this situation happens we took these out because they're not really doing much but blocking airflow and adding weight and making it more of a pain in the butt to take apart and put back together i just did a little tweak on what tommy had with these he had it kind of running along the arm and i just angle angled it out a little bit and put a stronger zip tie on it so that the antenna is a little further away from the carbon so that's all easy free stuff you can do without having to buy anything the only intended upgrade was to switch the video transmitter out but in testing that we burned up a speed controller so that's probably the first thing you should do if you own one of these or you're thinking about buying one because it's cheap go ahead and just switch the speed controllers out right away for like ten dollars per ese you can get an ese that will be much more reliable. Too. Yeah, and anytime you do get ESCs, it's it's smart to get a spare. Same thing with motors. These things break. They don't last forever. There is some chance it's just going to not work out of the box. Like even one of these new ones that Chad gave me to replace, one of them didn't work. So it's just, a, unfortunately, that's just part of this hobby for now. So if you are intending to switch this video transmitter out, once again, you know, pay attention to your SMA and RPSMA. Use different props. These props it comes with are not that great. We increased the gyro update rate and the PID loop rate up to 4K from 1K, I think is where Tommy had it. And I think that's about it. We'd like to thank you for watching. Please support us by visiting store.rotorriot.com for all your shopping needs. Go to quadcamp.com for all your learning needs and sign up for Quadbox for all your monthly random goodie needs. Take it easy. I'm going to go fly a little more in the cold. Dude.